Don't kill the cat! Ah! Hello, again, and welcome to Don't Kill the Cat number 6. This is going to be a bit of a weirder one, because I'll be trying to stream here whenever I can't get to the studio, so I'm trying this right now, see how it's going to work out. Hopefully it'll be acceptable, and I'll be able to do this in the future whenever I can't get to the studio. Because I want to keep these rolling. And oh yeah, I still haven't started editing the, the first one. I should have thought of a quote before starting this. Let's think of a quote really quick. The quote shall be... Whatever... What is whatever... Slang? How is that slang? <laughs> anyway, that's the quote of the day. What will be... Will be. Yeah, this is my little setup right now. Uh, I couldn't figure out anything more clever to put at the bottom, otherwise, it would have cropped too much up the sides. Etymology that I wanted to look into that I remembered. Yeah, my mic is a little bit bad too. I'll be working on trying to fix that. That is the etymology that I wanted to find. Oh, they don't have it here. No. Your meme dot com. <laughs> Social justice warrior. Keyboard warrior definition. Cambridge dictionary. Keyboard warrior. Someone who posts angry messages or likes to get into arguments on the internet. Person who posts highly opinionated text and images online in an aggressive or abusive manner often without revealing their own identity. These are only some of the right, Urban Dictionary. A person who, being unable to express his anger, because I don't know how many of these will be women, nothing personal, I'm just saying, his anger through physical violence, owning to their physical weakness, lack of bravery, and or conviction in real life, instead manifests that emotions through the text-based medium of the internet, usually in the form of aggressive writing that the keyboard warrior would not, for reasons previously mentioned, be able to give form to in real life. <laughs> this is very uh, rich. <laughs> the term is a combination of the word keyboard, the main tool by which a person expresses his or her blatant rage, and warrior due to the warrior-like aggression tendency towards violence strong nature and propensity towards brute force as a means of resolving conflict rather than more subtle means dependent on finesse. Keyboard warrior seeks to use the power imbued in his weapon <laughs> to effect <laughs> death and destruction in a strictly metaphorical sense upon his foes of virtual identities he has encountered on the internet. In essence, the keyboard, i.e. text input ability, allows the keyboard warrior to manifest his true warrior nature in a safe and removed environment from which no real-life repercussions. <laughs> keyboard warriors are generally identified by unnecessary rage in their written communications and are regarded as losers by other virtual identities on the internet. Ken is such a keyboard warrior when he gets onto the internet. And me, I just want to share my personal experience with this. I mean, when you go like on YouTube and start reading the comment section, there's sometimes, especially if it's on a video with an um, debatable topic, and then there's uh, these so-called keyboard warriors often start a back and forth between themselves, taking turns one after the other to argue very aggressively their point of view, make sure that everyone else on the internet understands that their point of view is the most correct point of view. Alright, next topic is going to be one of the oldest topics, and I usually start with the last one, which is the Venus Project. Don't kill the cat! <laughs> theoretical futurology thing project some type of project venus project is a non-profit organization founded by architect and social engineer jacques 
Fresco. Fresco with his partner Roxanne Meadows founded this organization with a socio-economic model to develop a resource-based economy for human beings utilizing technology. Fresco worked on the Project Americana before the Venus Project from 1955 to 1959. The project was mainly about environmental, traffic, and floodgates concerns. The Venus Project Project is a non-profit organization that presents a new socio-economic model utilizing science and technology towards social betterment to achieve a sustainable civilization, resource-based economy. I don't know if the audio is going to get through, but let's take a look. To counteract um, the problems of modern society. Investments. Jack Fresco, United Nations Nova Summit. The choice is ours. Unfortunately, it's kind of looking like a cult type of um, concept. Like it's being presented as if it's seeking followers, and it's not being presented. Maybe it's just the the method of approach but it's not maybe it is but i don't know if it's giving actual like uh concept like explaining the concept itself um and how each of these things will be integrated anyway maybe we should look at some videos that explain the topic a part of zeitgeist now one of the latest topics we're just going to start with the first the latest, latest one is... Don't kill the cat! Ha! <laughs> the octopus having three hearts. Let's see if they have anything on wiki. Common octopus. Let's read about it here. Contents. Respiration circulation. The octopus has three hearts. One main, two-chambered heart charged with sending oxygenated blood to the body and two smaller branchial hearts one next to each set of gills octopus have how is the plural the plural of octopus <laughs> octopuses okay octopuses have gills really i guess we should be looking at diagrams the circulatory circuit sends oxygenated blood from the gills to the atrium of the systemic heart then to its ventricle which pumps his blood to the rest of the body the oxygenated blood from the body goes to the brachial hearts which pump the blood across the gills to oxygenate it okay so it acts like as a part of the respiratory system like uh, mostly uh, oriented towards respiration more so than actual the analogy of lungs which would be the gills i guess and then the blood flows back to the systemic atrium for the process to begin again the aorta will leave the systemic heart two minor ones abdominal aorta and the gonadal aorta and one major one the dorsal aorta which services most of the body the octopus also has large blood sinuses around its gut and behind its eyes that function as reserves in times of physiologic stress there was an octopus on csi yeah and they mentioned it. I, I have heard about the three hearts before, but never actually looked at a diagram. I guess that's what we should do now. Is the hemocyanin the thing that we found in, 
insects in the last episode. Emo cyan, and there we go. Okay, we're making the connections. That's interesting. Just jumping from topic to topic randomly and making the right connections between them. So let's look at a diagram of an octopus. Octopus circulatory system. I think they added images image search to brave there it is okay so each of the two side hearts pushes the blood through the gills and the center one is the main one okay it's called a branchial heart systemic heart it's at the back of the well, skull the skull of the octopus is actually just in the front near the eyes really weird animal there was a kid in that episode and uh it called the octopus an alien Pretty accurate, if you ask me. Ink. You saw where the hearts are. And that's where the gills are. Okay, and let's just go to the third topic now. Which is a random topic, and I'm just gonna scroll really wildly and stop on this. And this is in Bulgarian, and it means... Don't kill the cat! Ha! <laughs> It's a headscarf, but it's the headscarf that women wear uh, and tie under their chin. The grandma's babushka. The grandma's here used to wear, like I think it's still the, the eldest grandma's still wear a kind of headscarf. Like that, and like they never take it off, ever. Maybe just when they sleep uh, and shower, but they're always with it. Bandana? I don't think it's a bandana. It's a scarf. Okay. Maybe it's a religious thing, I don't know. Let's read about it. Let's find it first. I think it has something to do with this. Maybe there is an instance of the Arab culture that has seeped into ours a little bit. I don't know if they would tie them behind. Like, I mean, the grandmas. Um, I don't know if I've seen any younger women with headscarves like that. Let's go back to Know Your Meme. See if we can find Babushka there. <laughs> Series of jokes. Reference images of a Chechen woman wearing an Eastern European head wrap. Commonly known as Babushka. Google.com Headscarf. But I do recall that um, headscarves were used a lot in the Western modern societies would wear them. But I'm sure that it's been a thing for epochs. I don't know about the veil during Christian marriage. I don't know if it would have anything to do with this kerchief. Eastern Orthodox? Maybe. Yeah, this is also a... Variation. Alright, let's just read about this. I also wanted to know about the etymology of kerchief. From the old French, couvrechief, 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 couvrechief. <laughs> that makes sense. Also known as bandana, a triangular or square piece of cloth tied around the head, face, or neck for protective or decorative purposes. The popularity of headkerchiefs may vary by culture of or religion often being used as a Christian head covering by women of the Anabaptist, Eastern Orthodox, and Plymouth Brethren denominations, as well as by some Orthodox Jewish and Muslim women. The neckerchief and handkerchief are related terms. Obviously. All right, Christian head covering. Maybe it's a religious thing. I I haven't thought about it to be something uh, of the sorts. All right, let's read. Christian head covering, known as Christian veiling, is a traditional practice of women covering their head in a variety of Christian denominations. Some Christian women, based on historic Catholic, Lutheran, Moravian, 
Reformed Anglican Methodist and Plymouth Brethren teaching wear the head covering in public worship and during private prayer at home. Though some women belonging to these traditions may also choose to wear the head covering outside of prayer and worship, while others, especially traditional Anabaptist Christians, believe women should wear head coverings at all times, based on St. Paul's dictum that Christians are to pray without ceasing from 1 Thessalonians 5.17. St. Paul's teaching that women being unveiled is dishonorable and as a reflection of the created order. In Oriental Orthodox Christian and Eastern Orthodox Christian churches, certain theologians teach the same doctrine that it is expected of all women to be covered not only during liturgical periods of prayer, but at all times. For this was their honor and sign of authority given by our Lord. While other clerics have held that head covering should at least be done during prayer and worship, Genesis twenty four sixty five records the veil as a feminine emblem of modesty. Manuals of early Christianity, including Didascalia Apostolorum and Pedagogos, instructed that a head covering must be worn by women during prayer and worship as well as when outside the home. Practiced in many parts of the Christian world, So yeah, and obviously we've seen Christianity slightly uh, suppressed, maybe, by the modern globalism, by modern traditions, by modern culture. And it's been slightly more hidden away. Like, it's not as it was some 150, 200 years ago as most of the Western world and obviously many other parts of the Christian world have been built on Christianity. Considering that it's lost influence and the interest of people, if this is like a Christian thing, obviously it's, it's going to be left a bit further back into history. It's kind of awkward. I mean, judging by my local uh, loss of traditions the way that I, i've said that most women most grandmas uh, used to wear these kind of head scarves when i was a kid but now i barely see anyone at all anywhere wearing head scarves like that and as i said it was a inseparable part of their daily life even if uh, they they weren't specifically religious i mean like excessively religious or something like that. I guess that should wrap it up. I don't know how long it's been. It says it's been 38 minutes. Wow, is that a record? How am I going to edit this? I was thinking of starting to edit today, but mm, didn't get around to it. And remember... Don't kill the cat!